uh, such as the shortage of clinical workforce, especially during the pandemic. And on the, like in this AI-powered healthcare workflow, on the starting end, we have seen that AI-isolated bioimaging, uh, bio biosensing, and data auto-processing has already been used in many uh, clinical uh, workflows and uh, have speeded up medical data preparation. However, on the end of this workflow, although research has been done on disease diagnosis and the precision medicine, this kind of like classification tasks, however, these two tasks are less mature. And despite more than a decade of focus on this research, the use of adopting AI in this clinical practice are still very limited. So many AI products for healthcare are still remain at design and the development stage. We also found it very difficult to persuade clinicians to trust the AI models because most of nowadays clinical AI models are trained from a small amount of data. And these AI models are typically not accurate and not generalizable. For example, IBM spent more than $60 million to fund AI-based cancer treatment uh, rec recommendation system. However, they still failed because their system only uh, was trained on a few hundred thousand patients. And IBM was not alone. The fundamental challenge is the variability of data. One solution to improve AI performance is to use more and diverse medical data. And one naive solution is to pull in this data into a cloud server or central server and then train a model in this server. However, we know that medical data is not easy to share due to privacy concerns and many legal regulations. To tackle this problem, I want to introduce a new learning scheme called Federated Learning that allows multi-center to collaboratively train machine learning models without data sharing. And the federated learning paradigm works like this way. Suppose we have two hospitals, client one and client two. Each of the hospital has their local protected database. They train private model locally use their protected data and using some privacy protecting techniques on their model parameters, then share the protected model parameters to our central server. The central server aggregate the shared model parameters from local clients, such as using an averaging strategy, and then broadcast the averaged uh, model parameters back to clients. We perform this kind of like updating, uploading, and broadcasting iteratively until convergence. And we hope to get a well-trained global model from the central server that can be better than any of the private model trained locally. However, there are several challenges of applying this fancy uh, training scheme for multi-center medical data analysis. For example, if we look at the data appearance, the distribution of data in different centers uh, can be very different, known as distribution shift. If we look at data labeling, medical centers usually have unlabeled data and also suffer from class imbalance. Also, medical data can be naturally formulated as graph based on patient's demographic uh, similarity. However, in federated learning, if we isolate different patients, missing links between the patients in different hospitals will be an issue. So in today's presentation, I will present our recent public work to address each of these challenges. So first, let's talk about the distribution issue in training federated learning for medical image analysis. Our work aims to tackle the non-IID data issue here for feature shift. If we look at the data distribution P, X, Y, which can be written as this way, we assume that the label distribution or conditional label distribution are the same across clients for simplicity, but the feature distribution are different. The problem is quite common in real life. For example, the appearance of medical images sampled from different hospitals 
may not be aligned due to different imaging protocols, different scanners they use, thus cause this feature shift. And the batch normalization, which is the focus of our iClear work, which is uh, collaborated with Professor Chida's um, CUHK, we focus on batch normalization, which is a widely used layer in deep convolutional neural network that aims to reduce the internal covariance shift. And the batch normalization parameters is averaged by default in a widely used federated learning strategy called Fed Average. However, what a role the, fed batch, norm uh, the no batch normalization is playing in federated learning remains unexplored. To better illustrate the impact of averaging the batch normalization layer in fed average, we present a toy example. Suppose we have two clients in federated learning which are simulated using uh, this uh, toy example. We plot the error surface in this figure with respect to the model parameter and the BN parameter, BN specialization. And we notice that if we average both model parameters and BN parameters, we have a higher generalization error than averaging the model parameters only. This motivated us to think about what if we exclude batch normalization in the aggregation and then let them involve locally. Thus, we propose our methods called FEDBN, which is a simple modification from the widely used federated learning strategy FED average. If you look at this pseudo code, we only have one conditional that need to insert into the original FED average uh, algorithm, where we need to make a condition whether this layer is a batch normalization. If it is, we don't send it into the central server for aggregation. This also can be viewed as a plug and play uh, scheme that can be combined with different optimization, aggregation, and communication federated learning strategies. And our method um, is implemented uh, with PyTorch in this original GitHub code and also integrated with many federated learning libraries. For example, in Flower, uh, you can find the FedBN as a benchmark and easily compare with your method. We conducted extensive experiments on real-world data sets, including the image classification on Caltech, where image acquired in different cameras and the environment. We also have image classification on DomainNet where, with different image styles and a neural disorder task with patients from different medical uh, institutions. Besides the benefits of having the better training surface as we show in the toy example and the better learning accuracy as we show in the previous slides with uh, comparison with other methods, we also show the benefits of FEDBN of having a, a better convergence compared with Fed average. In this figure, the dashed line shows the learning curve of Fed average, which is a baseline federated learning method. And the Fed BN is presented in the solid line with different local updating frequency or local updating steps. Fed BN consistently uh, accelerates the convergence of the training. To understand this phenomenon, we theoretically analyze the convergence of Fed BN in the over-parameterized regime. We utilize a tool called Neural Tangent Kernel, uh, which is uh, widely used in centralized domain to study the convergence of neural network training. The neural network um, training can be described by neural tangent kernel uh, based on the evolution matrix. And it says that the convergence of neural network depends on its smallest eigenvalue of its evolution matrix, which is also known as the neural tangent kernel. Here, the neural tangent kernel is defined as this gram matrix for both Fed average and Fed BN. Where this XP and Q are two data samples, and V is the model parameter. We show that under the G-dominated convergence, the smallest eigenvalue of the gram matrix of Fed BN is equal or greater than that of Fed average. So if we plug in these results into this N equation, 
we will conclude that Fed BN converges faster than Fed average. So the theoretical analysis was presented in our SEML uh, 2021 work. In addition to keeping BN locally to tackle the distribution shift issue, we also have another more empirical solution, which by incorporating domain adaptation in federated learning. And this is our work published in Medical Image Analysis. So different from the traditional domain adaptation methods, which mainly perform on the data domain, Federated learning setting does not allow any data leakage from the data domain, thus um, the traditional domain adaptation methods cannot fit. So we propose an adversarial alignment strategy. For the data sets in two different institutions in federated learning, we can treat one as the source domain and another one as the target domain. And we want to generalize the feature representation of the source domain to a common space of that of the target domain. To address this issue, we introduce the local feature extractor G and the domain discriminator D. First, this domain discriminator D is trained to identify which, uh, which, which domain the feature comes from, um, performing like this black arrow to enlarge the feature differences. Then the feature generator try to confuse the discriminator D that perform as the white angle to reduce the discrepancy. If we train this federated learning model end to end, we can minimize uh, the discrepancy between the source and the target domain, namely any two um, pairs of the clients in federated learning. Because the adaptation is performed at the feature domain, and this is known as the domain alignments on features, and also sharing features can be sensitive in federated learning, we also introduce differential privacy to protect uh, the feature privacy. For this method, uh, we tested on a medical task, which is for autism patients classification. And here we incorporated four medical institutions First, we compare federated learning-based methods versus centralized training methods. We observe that federated learning methods can outperform the alternative methods. And further, we show that by adding the uh, domain alignment strategy, we can further improve the performance of federated learning. Then let's look at this figure and ask why does adversarial domain adaptation can improve the performance of federated learning? So we use TISNI to visualize the space without and with alignment. We found that the alignment method overall improved the domain adaptation. Thus, we can explain why incorporating this alignment strategy can improve federated learning's data utility. Let's move to the next challenge, which is the labeling issue. In addition to the domain shift uh, on the data domain, when we applying federated learning for medical applications, we notice two critical challenges in labeling. First is that previous mentioned that the non-ID issue on the label, uh, on the feature, now we talk about the non-ID issue on label, which is also known as the class imbalance. Taking the binary disease classification as example, if a hospital has the class prior pi equal to 0.15, which means the disease rate is 15% under its sample population. For another hospital, which has the class prior of 0.1, this means it has the disease rate of 0.1 and 10% of the sample are patient in its database. This prior can be very different across different hospitals. In addition, the second challenge is that the hospitals may hold unlabeled data set, known as USET, due to the labeling cost and the time, uh, the time consuming issues. And also sometimes sharing data label may not be allowed due to privacy constraints. 
in this regards, we, we, we address a new problem setting of class imbalanced semi suppressed federated learning, or name it as the infed semi, by assuming that only server contains a small amount of labeled samples and all the clients contains unlabeled samples with presence of class imbalance. This is a very difficult problem, but it's also very close to the real world use of medical image analysis. And there are existing methods that target on semi unsupervised uh, learning in federated learning. But unfortunately, most of the current semi-supervised methods require data to be partially or fully labeled on clients. Uh, besides, the widely used semi-supervised learning methods based on these consistency or pseudo-labeling strategies have no awareness of class uh, imbalance issues. While in our setting, all the data at local clients are unlabeled with the presence of the class imbalance. To tackle this challenge, we break down the problem into two sub-problems. So first, let's look at how can we learn from the unlabeled data for a classification. We formulate the task as federated learning for a K-class classifier from the unlabeled data sets. We assume that we have C clients uh, each client has MC sets of unlabeled samples, then the data distribution can be expressed as this way. This is the distribution of X, and we can return it as the multiple of class prior and this. And also, we denote that the class prior has um, the probability uh, of uh, the class of, belongs to a certain class. And we also have another assumption we assume that the class priors of clients are different uh, and the concepts are the same. To study this problem in our iClear work, uh, we propose a strategy called FedUL to enable federated learning on local unlabeled data learning. The first step is to formulate a local surrogate classification task. Specifically, we use the indices of the users as the surrogate label and formulate the surrogate supervised federated learning task to classify which you said an unlabeled sample come from. Then the key question is that how to infer our desired classifier from this surrogate task? To this end, we bridge the true class um, probability and the surrogate class probability by a linear transformation Q. The detail can be referred to our theory uh, one in our iClear paper. Once we know this QC of each client C, empirically, we only need to slightly modify the local model then fit it into most of the federated learning schemes, such as Fed Average we introduced before. So we implement this linear transformation layer QC by adding it to the output of each local model. And theoretically, we show the optimal model recovery is guaranteed from this surrogate task. Note that only the model within this red box are shared in federated learning and the QC are calculated locally and they can be different across different clients. I didn't show the detailed expression of QC here, but it's calculated from the class prior pi C. However, the class prior is usually unknown. So our second task is to estimate this class prior. Reminding that in many cases, for example, we showed before, we assume that we can obtain a small amount of labeled samples in server. To estimate the class prior in this semi-supervised federated learning, we propose a dynamic bank learning method, which is recently accepted by Mikai, who also worked with Professor Chi Do in CUHK. So our methods dynamically construct the bank to select unlabeled data with its estimated pseudo-label for each client. And then we use the pseudo label to estimate the specific class prior for each client. 
So by calculating the highest probability for each unlabeled sample, we construct a bank to collect samples in a hierarchical way. Specifically, we use threshold HC to select the confident samples which exist a high prediction probability. In addition, due to class imbalance, the minority class tend to be underrepresented, leading to lower prediction probability. So we further use the threshold HM to reduce minority classes in bank to maintain the class diversity. Before um, each round, the bank collects samples with probability exceeding the threshold HM. Then it adjusted only reserving the confident scores that is above HC in the sampling. This is the overview of our methods, which we combine the dynamic banking for the um, class prior estimation and our transformation adding to the local model to perform federated learning in our setting. Due to the time issue, I will skip uh, the details. Let's look at the results. We evaluate our methods on two large-scale medical data sets. One is for brain bleeding classification, which contains six classes, and another one is skin lesion diagnosis, contains seven classes. We report the results using the following five evaluation metrics. This table lists the results on both data sets. Well, the first row, Fed Average SL, denotes the supervised learning with full labels. We take it as the upper bound of the, our two tasks. The second row are the SOTA semi supervised federated learning algorithms. And the third row are the non IID based federated learning methods combined with a popular semi supervised learning algorithm, fixed match. Compared with all of these methods, our uh, proposed approach, which is next to this blue arrow, achieved the best performance on almost all of the metrics on both data sets. So last, let's talk about the last challenge of deploying federated learning on population graph. When we deal with the real medical data, comparing with the um, natural image data, actually, we have more information. For example, in population disease uh, analysis, we can have the patient's demographic data. In such a way, data can be modeled as graphs, while the links can be learned as the similarity of patient's demographic information. Once built a graph, we can use graph convolutional neural network, in short GCN, um, to learn the graph prediction. However, a challenge that medical institutions continue to face is addressing the disease prediction in isolation with the incomplete data information, resulting in this isolated subgraph with missing neighbors. As shown in the figure on the right, for each hospital, they can formulate their local population graph. However, in federated learning, since data cannot be shared, so the similarity link between the patient of these two hospitals are missing. We use the dashed line to represent these missing links. Given the missing information in this formulation, simply combining GCN with the standard cross zero federated learning strategies on the distributed local graphs can undermine the effectiveness of GCN. So here, we want to introduce our recent work published in TMI to address this issue to deploy federated learning on isolated graphs. We, in this work, we noticed that the AGO network is the key component in GCN. So we introduced the local network in painting module to help complete the local AGO network. So our method is called um, FEDNI, FEDNI. FEDNI increases the effectiveness of GCM on the echo network and improves the performance by training a node generator and 
GCN classifier in a federated learning framework. The key component in our proposed method is this local network in painting module, which include the brace first searching module, a spectrum norm generator, and also an edge construction to ensure its effectiveness. And then later, we perform federated learning on both the node generator module and the local GCN um, classification module. Um, for the sake of time, let's skip to the results. We tested our methods on two public neural disorder datasets, a byte for autism classification and enemy for Alzheimer's disease classification. From this table, we can observe that FEDNI can outperform um, the local training strategy and the federated learning methods on graphs. And this FEDSAGE is our method proposed in New Rips 2021. And our methods can leverage more data by the node generation, which yield better generalizability. This is aligned with the theoretical analysis in our New Rips analysis work. In summary, to improve AI models' generalizability and accuracy, we aim to use more and diverse multi-center data under privacy regulations and try to avoid sharing medical data. To this end, we investigate how federated learning can be applied in multi-center medical data analysis. There are a few challenges, including distribution shift, unlabeled data, imbalanced class, and missing information when we deal with populational graph medical data. And to tackle these challenges uh, from different perspectives, we propose several methods, and I show the QR code linked to the work I presented today under each of the topic. At the last, I want to show sincere acknowledgement uh, to my students at UBC and my collaborators in our global partner universities. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention. And I'm, I'm happy to uh, take any questions. And also, this is my email. If you have any question follow up, feel free to shoot me an email.